Welcome back. In today's video, we are going to discuss about modern medicine under the concept of man and medicine. The objectives of this session is to understand the branches of modern medicine that is curative medicine, preventive medicine and social medicine. The dichotomy of medicine into two main branches, namely curative medicine and preventive medicine, was started as close to the 19th century. So guys, you can see the division or the comparison of the modern medicine into two branches, namely the curative and preventive began. Also, the pattern of the diseases began to change. There was a control of acute infectious diseases and there was prevalence of modern diseases. The modern diseases such as cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, mental illness and accidents came into prominence. And these modern diseases became the leading cause of death in the industrialized countries. I hope it's clear what happened guys. The change in the pattern of disease. Acute diseases under control. Whereas new modern diseases. The modern diseases became the leading cause of death in the industrialized countries. These diseases, the new modern diseases, could not be explained by the germ theory of disease. Then came the realization that other factors can also be uh, play a role in the causation of the diseases. The multi factors are the social, economic, genetic, environmental, and psychological. These economic, social, environmental, all these factors play an equal role in the causation of the disease was realized. Pettenkofer of Munich first mooted this concept of multifactorial causation of disease. So it can be an MCQ, they can ask you who was the first who mooted the concept of multifactorial causation of diseases? It was Pettenkofer of Munich. The development in modern medicine can be reviewed by the broad headings that is curative medicine, preventive medicine and social medicine. First, let me give you the main uh, differentiating or contrasting point between curative and preventive medicine and what is social medicine, then deal about it in detail. The primer is the curative medicine, it deals with a particular person who is suffering with a disease. Whereas the preventive medicine, you treat the people in masses. Majority of the population is being prevented from the disease. In curative treatment, diagnostic techniques are used to uh, like detect the disease and treat the disease in the individual person. And then social medicine, it deals with the man being a social animal and his uh, relation with the environment, which we'll be discussing in detail in the upcoming slides. I hope you have got a gist of it. Now, let us go in detail what it means. Curative medicine, the primary objective is the removal of disease from the patient rather than the mass. So, guys, very clear here. There is no mass people involved. It is just from the patient. The various modalities or the various modes to accomplish this objective is the use of diagnostic techniques and the treatment which is given. The primary objective is removal of disease from patient. Allopathic medicine is defined as the treatment of disease by use of drugs. How do they treat the disease? They treat the disease by using drugs which is producing a reaction which itself neutralizes the disease. So guys, uh, they produce an opposite reaction. Just for an example, heat. Okay, So 
they are going to produce an opposite reaction they uh, give the drug cold so this cold neutralizes the heat it produces a reaction which is opposite and what does it do it neutralizes the effect that is the disease how is this undertaken by the introduction of antibacterial and antibiotic agents so guys what is allopathic medicine it is the use of drugs which is producing a reaction that reaction is neutralizing the disease itself there is specialties which have emerged over time and importance they are surgery radiology and anesthesia and we also are very familiar about the specialist of the ENT based on the parts of the body ophthalmology cardiology and gynecology some are based on the age and sex groups such as pediatrics geriatrics geriatrics are the specialist who deal with the old aged people and their complex diseases okay and then we have obstetrics obstetrics and gynecology the females who deals with the pregnancy and female related complications again within each specialty there is a growth of sub specialty so guys see the thing coming up is sub specialty so we saw the specialties first these were the specialties now under the specialty comes the sub specialty specialty let us consider obstetrics is a specialty what are the sub specialties the sub specialties is neonatology and perinatology so what is neonatology and perinatology neonatology is a sub specialty which is in uh, specialized in the care of the newborn especially the premature newborns whereas perinatology it is the specialization done in high risk pregnancies in care of the fetus which is expected to undergo some complications perinatology is during the delivery okay Sp high risk pregnancies they deal with the patients during delivery whereas the neonate is after the birth the first month pediatric cardiology pediatric neurology and pediatric surgery are all there under the sub specialties of pediatrics i hope the speciality is clear so with this we uh, complete the curative medicine so guys what did you understand in curative medicine it deals with the particular person and not the mass and you have to define the allopathic medicine and write about the specialties which have emerged over time and importance moving on to preventive medicine preventive medicine is applied to healthy people in curative medicine in curative medicine you are dealing with the sick person and you are doing the diagnosis and treatment whereas in preventive medicine you are dealing with healthy people and also the large number of populations the primary object of the preventive medicine is prevention of disease preventive what are you preventing the disease and also promoting the health of an individual so guys think how can you prevent the disease we can prevent the disease by giving the drugs uh, the vaccines and then by proper diet and nutrition by diagnosing screening the cases so these topics let us understand in detail how do we prevent the disease and how can we promote the health in the people the eradication of smallpox so the world has achieved one great thing is the eradication of smallpox the smallpox the last case was dated in somalia in 1977 it is the greatest triumph of the preventive medicine the eradication of smallpox discoveries are also done in the field of nutrition the discoveries in nutrition have given a new dimension to the preventive medicine the new strategies have been developed now you got to know the nutrition what are the deficiency disorders and what have they done based on these deficiency disorders they are 
coming up with the new strategies to combat this deficiency disorder example the deficiency disorders are nutritional blindness iodine deficiency disorders and to combat these deficiency disorders the strategies have been come up the recognition of role of vitamins minerals protein and nutrients and also the dietary fiber it is enhancing the nutrition component of preventive medicine so guys what did they do two things okay the first one one is deficiency disorders they uh, ruled out the deficiency disorders and laid down the strategies in the second place they found out the role of the various vitamins minerals proteins and also the fiber and this added a nutrition component to the preventive medicine okay they found out the role of these uh, uh, various minerals and proteins in health and the third thing they came up with is the insecticides the discovery of synthetic insecticides such as ddt hch hch is hexachlorocyclohexane hexachlorocyclohexane is an insecticide which is used on the fruits vegetables and forest crops and next there is also the discovery of malathion malathion is a organophosphate insecticide what do they do in uh, malathion it is used to control the mosquitoes and the insects which is attacking the fruits vegetables and plants and these uh, discovery of the insecticides have brought a fundamental change in the control of vector borne diseases insecticides were discovered the vector borne diseases were brought under control the examples of the vector borne diseases are malaria leishmaniasis plague rickettsial fever or disease these are the important world wide health problems and these vector borne diseases were brought under control with the introduction of insecticides i hope it's clear guys the chemo prophylaxis and mass drug treatment are the important tools of preventive medicine so the chemo prophylaxis what is chemo prophylaxis it is the administration of medicines for the prevention of disease or infection so you can see the mass drug treatment which has been followed these are the tools which the preventive medicine is taking to prevent the diseases and promote the health a new concept of disease eradication came into practice the eradication of certain other diseases like measles tetanus gunia worm and endemic goiter are on the unwell so uh, so what's there uh, under being discussion and not yet it has not yet been uh, accomplished but under the discussion on the unwell what are the uh, diseases found they are measles tetanus gunia worm and endemic goiter are on the list to be eradicated from the world so far we have eradicated smallpox now next on the list are these diseases notable development in the 20th century is of screening the screening is done for the diagnosis of disease in the pre symptomatic stage and also the screening for the risk factors and the identification of the high risk groups so what do we do by screening the screening the mask screening is done for cervical cancers and obstetrical part so we get to see that mask screening has been done in high risk groups and also the high risk factors by doing this mass screening and also the screening for high risk groups we can prevent the disease and also diagnose the disease in pre symptomatic stage 
Preventive medicine is facing the problem of population explosion. Now, here comes the problem. The population explosion which is taking place in the developing countries. Now, India stands in the first position of the highest populated country in the wide world. So, the population explosion is the main problem of preventive medicine. As a result, there is some research done in the human fertility and contraceptive technologies have gained a momentum. So, the introduction of IUDs, condoms and uh, the various types of surgeries, sterilizations and so on have been researched and implemented. Three levels of prevention are recognized. The primary is intended to prevent the disease among healthy people. So, there are three stages. First, in the healthy people, you are preventing the disease. This is the primary step. The disease has not yet occurred. You are still preventing the person from getting the disease. In secondary, it is directed towards the people in whom disease has already developed. So, in secondary, the disease has developed and yet you are preventing the disease into progression. In tertiary, you are reducing the chronic disability and also the consequent to the disease. So, guys, you can see what are the consequences of the diseases. It can result in the chronic disability of the person. It can damage him mentally, physically. He can become handicapped. So, rehabilitation procedures can be done. In tertiary, you are preventing the permanent damage. Chronic disability to the person is prevented. In secondary, the disease has occurred, but you are trying your best to prevent the progression of the disease. So, I hope the three levels are very clear. In first, you you are preventing the disease in healthy people. In secondary, the disease has already developed, preventing progression. In tertiary, you are preventing the chronic disability and also the consequence of the diseases. Modern preventive medicine is defined as the art and science of health promotion. So guys, what is modern medicine? Modern preventive medicine, it is the art it is the science of the health promotion, disease prevention, disability limitation and rehabilitation. So, by the primary prevention, you are promoting the health. In secondary, your disease prevention uh, progression is done. And in tertiary, the disability limitation and rehabilitation is performed. So, I hope preventive medicine is clear let us just uh, see what we have studied so in preventive medicine you have to write the main differentiating point that it is affecting large number of population then the eradication of smallpox is a triumph of preventive medicine a new dimension of nutrition was added the deficiency disorders were discovered the role of vitamins and the other uh, nutrients were uh, like uh, uh, got into emphasized in the preventive medicine and also they discovered the insecticides and the control of vector borne diseases chemo prophylaxis there was concept of eradication and we saw a list of diseases which are on the unwilled to eradicate and the screening procedures were started as early as 20th century and we also studied about the population explosion and consequently the introduction of contraceptives and the three levels of prevention so i hope it's clear now we move on to the last part of the video that is social medicine Social medicine was sown by our pioneers such as Newman and Virchow. So you can see guys, it was by Newman and Virchow who sown the, who first sowed the preventive, uh, sorry, who first sowed the social medicine. The concept of social medicine was revived again by Alfred Grothan and who stressed the importance of social factors in the etiology of disease. Like how we saw the multifactorial causes of disease, now the social factors was stressed about by Alfred Grot Jan. He called it a social pathology. Now let us understand what he is saying under social medicine. Man is not a biological animal, but he is also a social being. And diseases also have the social causes, the social consequences, 
and social therapy so what did alfred say alfred said that man just cannot be a biological animal he is not a biological animal in fact he is a social animal he requires people around him so he requires the society to live in and there is a consequence and social therapy so these social causes can result in a disease can contribute in disease Social medicine is the study of man as a social being in his environment. So you are studying the man as a social being. You are not understand. You are not going to focus upon the pathology, the stage of the disease here. No, you are studying about this uh, social being and the so in his environment, how he is in his environment. The social medicine stands broadly on the two pillars that is medicine and sociology. The other stated that the social Sociology married the public health and became the social medicine. So, guys, here they are saying this was sociology, and the sociology got married to pub, um, uh, public health, and that is the community health, and then started the social medicine. Social medicine may be identified with the care of patients, prevention of disease, administration of medical services. it also emphasizes the strong relationship between medicine and social sciences so guys you only have to remember that social medicine deals with the person and his environment how his environment is leading to the causation of disease the changing concepts in public health and the social medicine are disease control phase health promotional phase social engineering phase and health for all phase the dates you can remember like this it's 1880 is what you have to remember plus 40 years down is 1920 plus 40 years down is 1960 plus 20 years down is 1980 Plus twenty years down is two thousand. So these are four phases which we have already dealt in the uh, other video. You can watch it to understand in detail about the concepts of health. I hope everything is clear. If you like my video, hit.